1921, Srangawi, home of the Amadori king Srangawi Marian Ruaya, was adopted as the traditional home of the Mori king movement. On land regained in the aftermath of the wars and confiscation of the 18,605. 1926 Royal Commission on Land Confiscations The rise of the Ratana vote boosted the determination of another politician, Sir Mal Palmer, for an inquiry into the 1860s confiscations. Palmer encouraged Mori dairy farmers to donate money for an inquiry, and convinced Prime Minister Gordon Coates of its value. The Royal Commission, set up with limitations on resourcing, its time frame and terms of reference, recommended compensation for some confiscations which it found to have been excessive. Taranaki Mzori accepted an annual payment of £5,000 from 1931, but negotiations for the other settlements were delayed until 1944. A political movement called Murura Padu, seeking more compensation for lost land, grew in the wake of Sir Maui's work. 1929 Mori Land Development Scheme set up The first Mori Land Development Scheme was set up by Native Minister Sir Aparanagata. The government provided funds for the development of Mori Land, and sometimes contributed small areas of crown land to the schemes. The tenure of the farmers on the schemes, though commonly chosen from among the landowners, was not always satisfactory. Inadequate crown management of at least some schemes resulted in large accumulating debts, which had to be borne solely by Iwi. In some instances, for example the Ngtai Manawa development scheme, the debt has only recently been paid off. Mori started to move off the land in the 1930s, an urbanization greatly accelerated by the Second World War. 1934 First celebration of Watangi Day two years after James Busby's former residence at Watangi was gifted to the nation by the Governor General, Lord Bledisloe. Watangi Day was formally celebrated for the first time on the site where the treaty was signed. Busby's home became known as the Treaty House and construction of Aware Anunga began beside it. This Mori meeting house was finished in time for the 1940 centennial, which celebrated the signing of the treaty as the nation's founding moment. 1944 Three settlements arising out of the 1926 Royal Commission and other formal investigations, settlement acts provided compensation to several major Iwi for land taken in the 19th century. The three major settlements were Gai Tabu, £10,000 per annum for 30 years, Wikado Maniapoto, £6,000 per annum, and Taranaki, £6,000 per annum for 50 years, and £5,000 thereafter. These were negotiated by Sir E. Uera Tarika Teen MP, Princess T. Puya and Sir Mal Palmer respectively. These settlements have subsequently been seen as inadequate in terms of the involvement of tribal members and their amounts. Iwi did not agree that these were full settlement of their claims. At least, however, there had now been efforts, in some cases, to offer compensation where the Crown had unfairly acquired lands and other resources. Copies of the Treaty of Watangi were hung in every school, and Mary in 1945, 1953 Mori Affairs Act focuses on unproductive land day measure designed to force unproductive Mori land into use, was introduced by the government in the Mori Affairs Act. Anyone who could now show the Mori Land Court, renamed from the Native Land Court in 1947, that a piece of good land was not being used, could then apply to have it vested in trustees. This act, allowing some flexibility in land management such as trusts, remained the governing legislation for Mori land for 40 years. For the first time, a reigning monarch, Queen Elizabeth II, visited Watangi. 1962 New Zealand Mori Council established this national body was set up as the pinnacle of a hierarchy of village and district councils, dating from 1900, though revived under the 1945 Mori Social and Economic Advancement Act. Largely because of the huge movement of Mori from country to town, the rural organizations declined in significance, while the New Zealand Mori Council gained increasing authority. 
1967 protest over Mori Affairs Amendment Act. Mori were becoming increasingly concerned at the continued alienation of their remaining land by paternalistic legislation, and by a lack of understanding of how the confusion of law since 1862 had mostly hindered, rather than assisted the development of Mori land by its owners. The Amendment Act in 1967 introduced compulsory conversion of Mori freehold land with four or fewer owners into general land, and increased the powers of the Mori trustee to compulsorily acquire and sell on economic interests in Mori land. The Amendment Act led to growing Maori concerns that the law would result in further alienation of what land remained, and also led to strong protests by organizations such as the New Zealand Maori Council and the Maori Graduates Association, street demonstrations and angry meetings throughout the country. The law was modified in 1974 and work subsequently began on the drafting of a completely new act. 1974 with Tangy Day with Tangy Day had been a holiday since 1963 for Auckland and Northland only, replacing the provincial anniversary holiday. The Mori protest movements took up the long-standing Ratana demand for ratification of the treaty, that is, having it formally recognized in legislation. In 1974, three years after Eng Tomato staged the first big protest at Watangi, 6 February became a national holiday, and the Queen attended her first Watangi Day ceremony. It was, for two years, briefly renamed New Zealand Day. 1975 Maury Land marched slash Hikoi from 14 September, Wina Cooper's Maury Land Goy marched from the tail of the fish. Tiaika Amui, North Island right parenthesis at Cape Reinga, to the head, Wellington, to publicize concerns over unceasing disposal of Mori land and crown hands. Gathering support at about 25 stops along the way, the Hikoi reached the capital on 13 October. 5,000 people walked onto Parliament grounds and presented a petition bearing 60,000 signatures. By the time a tent embassy was dismantled two months later, the Goy had raised public awareness of Mori concerns. Responding to the pressure of the Hikoi and other lobbying, the government passed the first legislative recognition of the treaty, although there had been recognition of aspects of it in the legislation of the 1860s. 1975 Watangi Tribunal established the Treaty of Watangi Act established the tribunal, the Watangi Tribunal, as a formal, ongoing commission of inquiry, to hear grievances against the Crown. But it limited such grievances to those occurring after the passing of the Act in 1975, and allowed the Tribunal the power to make findings of fact and recommendations only, not finding determinations. The Watangi Tribunal first began hearings two years later, but, particularly because of that limitation, few claims were investigated. 1977 Bastion Point Occupation Protesters occupied Bastion Point in Auckland in January 1977 after the government announced a high-value housing development on former Ngtaiwutu Reserve land overlooking the Waitmat Harbour. Over time the once large reserve, designated inalienable, had been reduced in size by compulsory acquisition, leaving the Ngtaiwutu O or K tribal group holding less than one hectare. After 506 days the occupiers were evicted by police, in May 1978, by which time Bastion Point had become a household term for land rights protest. The film Bastion Point, Day 507 was released three years later. Since then, at the recommendation of the Watangi Tribunal, much of the land has been returned to or vested with Ngai W.H. Kamatua. 1981 Raglan Golf Course protest land taken during the Second World War for a military airfield at Raglan was returned to tiny Liaero people, but only after a long dispute and protest. Instead of being handed back to its former owners, when not required for its designated public purpose, Part of the land had been turned into a golf course in 1969. This led Eva Rickard to initiate protest action in the 1970s. 1985 Crown allows 